On July 16th in Toronto, the rain came down in a flash. Hard bursts that seemed like they'd never stop. 100 millimeters fell on some parts of the city in less than an hour. Cars were stranded, major highways were overwhelmed, and basements were flooded. Toronto's seen this before. 2005, 2013, 2018. All so-called 100-year storms. Months later, Mayor Olivia Chow says Toronto needs to speed up its flood prevention work. There's no time to waste. Uh, it's better to prevent the flooding than repairing the damages. The damages is not just financial. So we have to do something. It's just not clear how she'll fund it. Toronto's work to prevent stormwater damage is made up of a patchwork of policies, plans, and protocols. Some have been on the books for decades. Most continue to evolve with each passing year and each severe weather event, influencing council to make changes. The senior civil servant in charge of overseeing those plans is Lou DiGeronimo. The general manager of Toronto Water points to work on the $3 billion Dawn River and Central Waterfront project as evidence of progress. We never forget the previous storms, just so we're clear, and we have dedicated teams that are working on it all the time. So what, what do I feel when we know a storm is coming? Is that, as I wish we could work faster. Construction started in 2018 with the 10 and a half kilometer Coxwell bypass tunnel. That expanded new tunnel will capture stormwater runoff, which is mixed with raw sewage during big storms. It will connect with 27 local sewer systems and contain 11 storage chambers. Toronto also intends to build two other connecting bypass tunnels, the Inner Harbour West Tunnel and the Taylor Massey Creek Tunnel. Both will be larger than regular sewers and contain storage shafts to hold water during intense weather. The tunnels will meet at the Ashbridge's Bay Water Treatment Plant, which is now being expanded to treat and release the increased flows. What they will notice is they will see their water quality in their local creeks, in the Inner Harbour, they'll see that improve significantly. But they'll also see us uh, applying for delisting the harbour as an area of concern. But DiGeronimo acknowledges that even with billions of dollars in work underway, billions more are needed. That doesn't surprise this expert. A lot of slow crises rarely get traction. And it's only when you have extreme events that there is a lot of, you know, um, wake up calls. Limited money, increasing construction costs, and stiff competition for technical and engineering expertise have all slowed progress. We know what needs to be done. We need to complete that work. We need the financing to do that work. You know, the sooner we put the solutions in, the better it is for everyone. The city's eager to move all of this work forward, but so far a council request from 2019 to accelerate the project has fallen short. The provincial and federal governments haven't provided cash to accelerate the work. Sean Jefford, CBC News, Toronto.